Welcome to the Starfire Sports Stadium in Tukwila, Washington for MLS Next Pro Soccer here on MLSNextPro.com. It's the Tacoma Defiance hosting the Whitecaps FC2 here in West Coast action in the Pacific Northwest. We thank you for joining us. My name is Danny Wall. Looking at the table in the Western Conference, it has been controlled by Colorado Rapids 2 all season, even Austin FC right behind them. However, Tacoma Defiance have wins over Colorado Rapids 2 and Austin FC 2. They're currently sitting at third in the West with 33 points. The Whitecaps sitting at fifth with 30 points at 8, 7, and 4 on the year, hoping to cap off the month of July with a win in their record books as we are moments away from beginning. The Tacoma Defiance coming off a loss against LAFC 2. And that was their first loss since early in June, June 5th to be exact, when Defiance lost 2-0 to St. Louis City 2. But since then, they've had a tremendous summer having results, whether a win or a draw, throughout the rest of the month of June and throughout July. And to come with Defiance is 5-1-2 and two at home. So trying to bounce back after that loss. Er, and looking at the starting 11 first for the home Tacoma Defiance running a 3-5-2 formation this afternoon. And, uh, and the five midfielders will be Bradilio Rodriguez to keep an eye out for. Rodriguez with seven goals and two assists on the season. Paul Rothrock and Georgie Manungu, the two forwards in this 3-5-2 formation. Facing off against the Vancouver Whitecaps 2, running a 4-3-3 formation. They are 2-5-2 two, two on the road and trying to get a win here in July. Keep an eye out for Cameron Habibula in the midfield and Glory Amanda, the striker, in this 4-3-3 formation. Max Anker also back in the starting lineup, so he'll make his ninth start on the year, a 63% save percentage. However, his last start prior to the MLS Next Pro Invitational which resulted in a 1-0 loss against Crystal Palace. Anger was the goalkeeper in the Whitecaps FC2 7-1 loss to Sporting Kansas City 2 earlier in the month of July. So trying to shake that off as he makes his ninth store on the year between the pipes. You see the Whitecaps FC2 already out on the pitch awaiting Tacoma Defiance. Karen Collado, our head referee, CJ Cole and Karsten Gilwad, our ARs, and Justin St. Pierre, the fourth official. We are moments away from kicking off our first matchup of the day here at MLS Next Pro. A high noon showdown in the Pacific Northwest between these two Western Conference teams trying to stay afloat in the Western Conference table. Defiance with 33 points, Whitecaps FC2 with 30. And we are underway in Starfire Stadium with the Tacoma Defiance wearing their home black and green kits, Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 in their road white and blue kits as Whitecaps FC2 working from the back Here's Mihal Girashimenkov. Has it taken away by the Defiance. Down at the wing, Blake Bowen sends it back out. Here at top of the box. And trying to find something early as Elias Castaros going far side recovers. That's going to be the big focus for the Defiance. How will this 3-5-2 formation, when you have five midfielders able to work along up with you, how will that make an advantage for the Defiance throughout this match? Here's the pass. Down at the far side wing, Minungu, one-on-one. Still with it is Travian Sousa. And Sousa maintains possession for Tacoma off of Whitecaps FC2. The 
Defiance 8, 4, and 6, and they've really just been on a hot run throughout the summer, even though their last loss 2-1 to LAFC 2. Overall, assistant coach Mike Morris, who took over for the press conference for head coach Wade Weber, mentioned how, hey, we weren't really satisfied with our performance. We knew LAFC 2 was a good team. The standings don't really dictate the way they've been playing this year. But overall, Coach Morris also said that the team had a good week of practice and preparation for this matchup against the Whitecaps FC2 out of play, and it goes back to Vancouver. So an interesting situation for Tacoma. Assistant Mike Morris leading the charge here today. Wade Weber is still here with the Defiance. However, Throughout the season, there have been select assignments for assistant coach Mike Morris, a part of his coaching development, to lead the reins for a couple of games this season. This is his third of the year, and the previous two have worked out to Tacoma's favor with two wins against Houston Dynamo 2 and the LA Galaxy 2 this year. Coach Morris looking to remain perfect in these coaching duties. As Vancouver advances up the pitch, here's Gloria Amanda. Amanda trying to get past the end line and good defense there at the end by Hal Duritz. That leads to the first corner kick for Vancouver. Hal Duritz wearing the captain's band for Tacoma this afternoon. 18th game this season, 16th start. He has four goals on the year, but has done a tremendous job defensively throughout the season. First corner kick for Vancouver is bounced around and into the back of the net for a goal. Will it count? Yes, it will. Vancouver on the board in the fourth minute, and it's 1 0. The first set piece for Vancouver works out in their favor. Take a look at this. That ball bounced around between two separate defenders. And you see in the mix, just got off the shoulder of the attacker in the box. So just like that, a 1-0 Vancouver lead. So Tacoma down early here. And this is also the second matchup between Tacoma and Vancouver. Can we see an early equalizer? Soda Kitahara down the end line and out of play. The goal will go to Gloria Amanda with his fourth on the year. Got to feel good for Amanda in his fourth team start this year for Vancouver. Here's a set piece for Tacoma. Kitahara rotating over. The Fines working from the far side now at the wing. Going inside for Frank DeRoma. DeRoma sends it back out. Turnover. And this is what the Whitecaps FC2 want to establish, have that fast pace to get things started. To be an easy turnaround for the Whitecaps FC2. After so far in the month of July, 0-2 and 1. However, the first time the Whitecaps FC2 faced off against Tacoma, it was a 1-0 win. Cameron Habibula had a goal in the 57th minute. So a 1 0 lead here in the opening minutes with Gloria Amanda getting his fourth goal on the year. Pass is deflected. It will go out of play. Last touch by Blake Bowen for the Defiance. Throw into the near side wing, trying to get that pass 
one step back. Trying to find Amanda again there. On the far side, final third, no foul. Vancouver recovers inside the box. Low right, trying to turn and fire, taken away by Tacoma. Rodilio Rodriguez trying to get through, a foul called. Across midfield, Rodriguez advancing up, taken away and sent out of play by Vancouver. Stuart Hawkins touches one over to Oduritz. Taken away once again by Vancouver. Near side of Mata. Amanda rather, inside the box. Fired with the left foot and just off. Tailing just a tad right, but already Gloria Amanda in full form after that first goal off the corner kick. Has plenty of space, cuts to his outside and just off on the front post. But it just shows how Vancouver is taking advantage of this three-player back line for, Van, uh, for Tacoma, excuse me. Winning a 3-5-2 will have some of the disadvantages. There's a foul at midfield, and we may have our first yellow. And it will be a yellow card to Giovanni Aguilar for Vancouver. Aguilar wearing the captain's band for the Whitecaps FC2. You see there right at center circle where the foul occurred. So play resumes to come away, see no time advancing into the final third. Inside the 18, nobody home. Looking for Rodriguez. He was in the vicinity, did not work out. Tacoma still working from the back. Advancing across midfield on the near side. Here's another chance in the box again and sent out by Vancouver. So in the opening minutes, we're seeing from Tacoma trying to get to Bradilio Rodriguez, one of the midfielders inside the box. The unique thing of running a 3-5-2, you have two players on the outside, Travian Sousa and Blake Bowen as wingbacks that can help on either side, defensively or offensively. We've seen Rodriguez and Soda Kitahara try to get involved, the two midfielders as well. Kitahara going outside to Bowen. Bowen touches one over to Minugu. Georgie Minungu on the cross and just outside. Another corner kick coming up for Tacoma. Approaching the 12th minute of the first half. It's 1-0 Vancouver, wasting no time. Kitahara, the cross inside. It is sent away by Vancouver. Another close opportunity for the Defiance. Kitahara got it right in and almost had Manungu inside. Didn't get all of it and taken away and cleared by the Whitecaps FC2. Now pressure coming. Oh, Tacoma has it in the box and then sent out. That will lead to a corner kick. 
a prime opportunity for the Defiance. This portion of the match is brought to you by Providence Swedish, official health care provider of Seattle Sounders FC and Tacoma Defiance. Inside the final third again, working inside the box. Manungu trying to keep it in. Rodriguez crosses too far. Possession going to Vancouver. A good sequence from Tacoma. A couple of close looks. And what a way to respond after giving up the goal in the opening minutes. Covered by Tacoma. A great opportunity to focus on the principles of this 3-5-2 formation. That's one thing Coach Morris has talked about, you know, more so about the principles than the formation itself. It's more of a tool to implement the principles that they have. And on the move once again, Vancouver, Amanda taken away, Kitahara. Gets to the back line. Uduritz going to the goalkeeper, Jacob Castro. Or correction, almost getting that ball to Max Anchor, goalkeeper for Vancouver. Or correction again, it was Castro. Kitahara. Well, that's a good ball on the far side. Will it be onside, though? No. For the Whitecaps FC2, led by head coach Ricardo Clark, as they will have position, Finn Linder. Over to Gira Simonkov. Got to be careful with Keita Hart threatening up. And the big thing that Coach Clark has been looking for throughout the season have been consistency, which has been a challenge for in the next pro level because when you have teams in the MLS that have players down, need to call up players from the next pro for training, it can be difficult to find that consistency. Another foul and the yellow card going to be given to Vancouver. So a great free kick opportunity and some chippiness on the pitch. Head official Karen Collado trying to restore order. You see here again. So a free kick, Paul Rothrock gonna set this one up. Rothrock with three goals and five assists on the year. You can do a little bit of everything. Rothrock on the free kick in the box, header goes left. A good look there by the Defiance, see Rothrock got it right in at the end and just off the head near the six, didn't get the right angle. Possession has mainly been with Tacoma ever since that first goal. Across midfield, here's Manungu. Advancing up, Manungu in the final third. 
Good ball inside the 18, cross and taken away, cleared by Vancouver. Travian Sousa was in the mix as well, trying to find the equalizer. Both shots so far in the first half by Tacoma have been inside the box. And one on target just did not work out. Meanwhile, the one shot by Amanda off the head and the set piece. Final third once again. Rothrock cutting towards the end line. Crosses deflected out of play. Corner kick to Coma. Kitahara taken away. The defense from Vancouver has really been impressive in this first half. One on two in the corner, stolen by Defiance in the 18, trying to go back to Rothrock and out of play. Here's Whitecaps goalkeeper Max Anker. Goes to Gareth Simonkoff. Amanda couldn't get through. Possession, defiance. Bowen throws it in. Rothrock at the near side wing, one on one. Over to Bowen, who keeps it alive. It's pinned around and taken away by Vancouver. Oh, a good ball. Sent up to low right. Right slides one through the 18, and running up is Castro with the save. Jacob Castro, his fifth game of the year. He's only given up four goals, but now five, but had 18 saves entering this match. His save percentage was over 80%. Here comes a counter, and now an open man, Rothrock, inside, cross deflected. Paul Rothrock working his way past Christian Greco Taylor and had plenty of open space on the near side. So you're getting that left hand, almost like a stiff arm, saying, get off me. Entering the box and even had Manungu waiting inside the 18. Ball just lofted inside and will roll out of bounds. Anchor setting up for the goal kick. <laughs> Got to be careful if you're Vancouver. Greco Taylor trying to get past. Bowen still hanging on. Oh, great slide. Made a takeaway. But out of play, possession stays with Vancouver. Great job by Travian Sousa there. <laughs> Cross midfield again, player goes down out of play. It'll stay with Vancouver. Correction, stay. Here is Samenkov on the throw in. Vancouver staying with the back line, a takeaway by Tacoma. They have numbers, advancing up the pitch and great defense 
at the very end by El Aj Ba. It'll stay with Tacoma here on the near side, on the far side rather. This portion of the match is brought to you by Wafed Bank. Crush your financial goals with free checking from a best bank. Tacoma down 1 0 here in this first half. Kitahara has had some looks as that's deflected off of Kitahara. And now to play. The big thing that Tacoma has done going to Kitahara or Blake Bowen and even Paul Rothrock getting involved. This is one of the things that the Defiance worked on in training this week leading up to the match. Assistant coach Mike Morris said, hey, we still need some more frequency and we need to penetrate specific zones in our final third. And it's been more principle-centric than player-centric in creating goals. There have been some opportunities in this first half, especially that takeaway by the Defiance, but still looking for their first goal of the match. Long pass for Vancouver, stolen by the Defiance. Across midfield. Rodriguez cutting towards the middle. Rodriguez was looking for Bowen on the near side in the box, taken away by Vancouver. Burst of speed, glory Amanda. Amanda one on two. Here's Cameron Habibula having called his name much in the first half. With that early goal, there has not been as much pressure and urgency from the Whitecaps FC2. Here's Siemenkov to Amanda. to the final third, just off on the pass, take away Tacoma. And now with some space. On the far side. And it will stay with the Defiance. Take away Vancouver. Burst of speed. Entering the final third. Amanda. Top of the box. Amanda. Goes back central and just uh, not the best shot off the foot for Vancouver there. An easy save by Castro. He rolls it up. Here comes the counter for the Defiance. Rodriguez to Bowen. Bowen cuts towards the middle. Bowen fires is blocked. Clear by to by Vancouver, recovered by Tacoma. Here's Kitahara. Now the back line rotating far side. Tacoma has Won the possession battle by a wide margin in the first half, 67%. They've been having more tactical looks into the final third. But as we mentioned, Vancouver, after scoring that first goal in the fourth minute, by Gloria Amanda, there hasn't been much of an urgency. They've been able to advance into the final third by takeaways in transition. Meanwhile, burst of speed here for Tacoma. Kiyahara goes wide. On the far side, now inside to Rodriguez. The cross is deflected out of play. Corner kick coming up. And that right there, that sequence, a prime example for the defiance with the possession. Now 
Now rotating in. Elias Casaros keeping possession alive for the Defiance. Casaros into the box and it's caught and brought down by Anchor. Max Anchor, the goalkeeper, ready that time for Vancouver. Coach Clark talked about the play of Anchor throughout the year, said that you know he can show his character and leadership. That's what you want to see in goalies and establishing a presence in games via body language and confidence. And Coach Clark also said that Anchor has also helped break the pressure in our buildup. And it's on display on that save. Vancouver in the final third. Habibula fires with their left and deflected and saved by Castro. Cameron Habibula taking a shot just outside the box. And fired with the right foot instead and Castro leaning left to make the save. Last time, the Whitecaps FC2 had a corner kick. It resulted in the goal by Amanda in the fourth minute. Now will Vancouver execute this set piece? <laughs> On the corner, punched out by Castro. Vancouver trying to recover. You're a semen cough, no success. Possession Tacoma. And it's taken away once again. Another chance here for Vancouver. Amanda, good pass inside the box. On the cross, header bounces, punched out with his left hand. Castro there on the save, second ball deflected by Amanda. First, it was Giovanni Aguilar, then Gloria Amanda. With Aguilar on the cross, the header just bounced down and gave Castro a chance. Starting to see some aggressive looks from the Whitecaps FC2. Kitahara. Foul. It's going to go on to Coma that puts Vancouver in great field position here. <laughs> but look at the fouls. One on two. Kitahara trying to retain possession for the Defiance but rather a foul and puts Vancouver in great field position. Javi Bula set this one out in the box. Off the head. Oh, great save at the end. What a save by Castro at the last possible second. Wow, Castro has been working here in the first half in these last few sequences. I mean, take a look. That ball placed right inside for a header and just at the last second, Castro got his hand out. Another corner, still in the 18 and cleared by Tacoma. Manungu racing down the pitch and just got tied up. It was three on two in favor of Vancouver as far as numbers. But you can see that's where Tacoma's trying to get an advantage, being able to run out in transition and try to find some shots. Greco Taylor. 
Near side, Habibula. Habibula gets it right back. Greco Taylor going to the back line. Antoine Couplin. Now Elodge Ball trying to get involved. Rotates back to Aguilar. Aguilar inside the 18. Right, fires. Oh, another high shot. The pressure is picked up for Vancouver. It's a good turn and just a bit high from Lowell Wright. Wright making his third start this season. Now with six shots on the year. Throw in for Vancouver. Trying to hang on to possession, going to the back line again. Rotating over, here's Finn Linder. Gerasimenkov finds Amanda. Whitecaps FC2 trying to double their lead before halftime, picking up the aggressiveness on the pitch. Amanda, little give and go action. Central, now going wide, far side. Inside the box, crosses and another save by Castro. Castro has been working for the defiance. This portion of the match is brought to you by the Piala Tribe of Indians, a proud supporter of Tacoma Defiance. Tacoma has really stepped things up defensively, mainly Jacob Castro, the goalkeeper. He has been pressured a good bit in these last few possessions, but Castro doing an amazing job keeping it at a 1-0 game. Bowen across midfield. Oh, good ball. Roth Rock couldn't get there in time. And there's a foul. Late whistle by Kaladu. Had a referee. Going to go on Hal Uduritz. Anchor directing traffic. <laughs> Got to give credit to the back line and defensive play of the Whitecaps FC2. There have been a few possessions for Tacoma. Getting into the final third, getting some early balls out in transition, some counter attacks, but still looking for the equalizer. Abibula at the edge of the 18. Top the box. Aguilar, nowhere to go. On the near side, Amanda one on one. Amanda the cross, headed out and cleared by Tacoma. Recovered by Vancouver. Abibula, surrounded by three black jerseys. Back out to Greco Taylor, rotating far side now. Possession will stay with Vancouver. Quick throw in to right. Another foul, this one gonna go on the Whitecaps FC2. Possession to Coma. Field. On the near side, Bowen has it. 
Over the final third, Bowen, good pass to Rothrock. On the outside at the wing, Rothrock crosses and just off, but that's in. Is that a goal? Yes, it is. We're tied at one. Some mishandlement by Vancouver. And Tacoma finds the equalizer. Look at this again. It was a great ball. Bowen found Rothrock and was looking for Manungu in the box. And the ball just took an awkward bounce and then found the back left corner of the net. I'm not sure if that's going to be a goal for Rothrock or an own goal for Vancouver. But nonetheless, we are tied at one. And I'm being told that it is an own goal from Vancouver. Now the intensity picking up for Vancouver. Can he retake the lead really fast? And it's cleared by Tacoma. Vancouver still with possession. Going on the near side, almost had Happy Pula, but rolls out of play. What a unique first half that we've had at Starfire Stadium. You could say that both goals are own goals. I mean, along with the one that was off of Finn Linder, the center back for Vancouver. While the first goal was scored by Gloria Amanda, some could say it's an own goal on the goalkeeper, Jacob Castro. What a way for both sides to get goals in the first half. To come maybe looking for another. Kitahara. Tied at one in the 40th minute of play. Take away Vancouver. Aguilar goes to the back line. Over to Garrett Siemenkov. Take it away. Tacoma has it. Bowen. Center circle. The Roma. Kitahara. Some quick passes from the midfield. Now into the final third. Top of the box, Manungu lost it, recovered Daroma. Rodriguez communicating with the rest of his teammates. Now will execute and it's cleared turnover. Vancouver on the move. Oh, a good ball set to Amanda. Amanda with the shot, and it runs right into Castro, and Castro quickly falls on it. That was a beautiful ball to Gloria Amanda. Looking for another goal. Take away Vancouver. Just great defense once again by Jacob Castro. Aguilar, just too far trying to get to Garasimenkov. So officially both goals have been own goals.
Five and third again. Good ball, cutting toward the middle. Long shot goes left. Souza really wanted that one. So Jacob Castro with the own goal that resulted in Vancouver's first goal. And then Finn Linder with an own goal resulting in the equalizer for Tacoma. So that will not be a goal counted to Gloria Amanda from the fourth minute of the play. Foul called, some confusion. It will be possession defiance. No yellow cards given. Uduritz resumes play. Daroma with the pass. Rodriguez in the box. Minungus. Now the Roth Rock. The cross is deflected quickly by Garrett Siemenkoff. Wasting no time on this set piece. Daroma find an open Manungu near side. Now in the box, Rodriguez bounced around. Still in the 18. And now a whistle. A player down for Vancouver. Christian Greco Taylor able to get up on his own power. Got shaken up. There have been some unique sequences in the 18 for the Defiance compared to the Whitecaps FC2. We saw earlier Tacoma winning the possession battle. And even though Tacoma's still winning the possession battle eight shots taken by Vancouver four on target six of those shots inside the box and really ramped up after that equalizer from the defiance on the own goal from Finn Linder and coach Morris for the defiance knew the Vancouver has done a great job implementing systems defensively and has some vertical threats. And we've seen that a couple of times. I mean, that first set piece that resulted in the old goal for Castro, Gloria Amanda was in the mix and got a lot of air inside the six. Deep kick by Anchor and quickly cleared by the Defiance. Nungu staying with it. Goes out wide to Roth Rock. Roth Rock inside the 18. The cross still has it. Here's a shot that just goes way off the foot of the Roma. That was a tremendous angle, but did not come off the foot the way he wanted. So Anchor will tee this one up as we are in stoppage time. Two minutes here in the first half. What a unique first half that we've had in Starfire Sports Stadium. And we still have a other, another half left to go in this match. Both Tacoma and Vancouver are sitting at a good spot in the Western Conference table. Both teams above the playoff line. The Defiance third in the East, Vancouver fifth. Or rather third in the, in the West, Vancouver fifth in the West. Wow. 
Whitecaps FC2 on the throw in. Over to Gary Siemenkoff. Amanda at the wing. Amanda crosses off the head, and that will roll out of bounds. Possession will go to Vancouver. Another corner kick here. But it will not happen as the whistle blows, and that ends the first half. Our score at the half, Tacoma Defiance 1, Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2 with 1. Off of own goals, Finn Linder and Jacob Castro having own goals in the first half, making it 1-1. One, one. Well, MLS Next Pro got to take part in MLS All-Star Week by reviving goalie wars. Not only did the four keepers perform at a high level, we got some unique access with the player cam powered by AT&T 5G. Final on the left, Ben Martino, and on the right, Isaac Walker brought back unofficially last year. Oh. Not a popular demand. A big chance for Ben Martino now to try to tie it up, and that should do it for Isaac Walker, who is winning this first round of goalie wars. Now it's time for the second semifinal. Damian Loss and Xavier Valdez going head to head. <laughs> Oh, equalizer from Xavier Valdez. Now to win for Damian Loss, oh. and he does in overtime. Damian Loss advancing to the final of goalie wars. Isaac Walker, Damian Loss. Doesn't he? Oh, this is what he's going to, I think, isn't he? He knows the time. Damian Loss has got to go quick. Oh, my Does goodness. he get it? Oh, my goodness. But in all seriousness, Damian Loss has put on the, the show. 2023 MLS Next Goalie Wars win. Yes, Isaac Walker, ah! the new champion. Ah! Let's go! Give me the bell, baby! Oh! Isaac Walker, MLS next pro. It's, it's such a cool game. You know, Along with goalie roll wars, there were a lot of international matchups for MLS Next Pro. And as we wrapped up our international competitions Friday, Michelle was in Salt Lake and got to sit down with Real Salt Lake Assistant General Manager Tony Beltron to talk about his role with the club and how international competition can help clubs domestically. I'm Michelle Montaigne, and today MLS Next Pro is absolutely honored to be sitting down with Tony Beltran, Assistant General Manager for Real Salt Lake. And can we just start with you describing what exactly that entire role entails? Sure, absolutely, and a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So as the Assistant General Manager for Real Salt Lake, I oversee the day-to-day -day operations and the longevity of our developmental side. So that includes Next Pro and also our next teams, our academy teams, Real Monarchs and our U15 and U17 academy side. A lot of those guys who get to use this beautiful facility. What went into the decision to build this really one of a kind state of the art facility? Ambition, ambition. And I think a, an understanding of the, of kind of the, the roster rules of MLS. Um, our previous owner, Joy Hansen, saw an efficiency and that's in collaboration with the front office and that was that there's an obvious benefit on the cap side of having homegrown players play for your first team. And so we previously had our, our, our academy off-site in Arizona, which is also part of our territory, but bringing it in in-house here in Utah allowed us the, the continued advantage of having all of our players under one roof. And so now with housing the Monarchs and our academy full-time and our residential dormitory, 
On a given day, we have the ability to pull players from each team, have them up for training, have them go down for opportunities, uh, and do all of that instantaneously. So it's a huge advantage, it's a huge resource, and thank you so much for complimenting. It is a beautiful campus and we are very spoiled. No kidding, it is beautiful for sure. But um, in terms of the impact you've seen it play on the field, can you talk a little bit about how it has shown up and how having all of these things under one roof has really generated value on the pitch? Yeah, I, I think a really good example is reflected in our first team. And so for the last five years, Real Salt Lake has led the, led the league in homegrown minutes played um, in the regular season. So it's a stat that I'm really proud of and our club is really proud of and I think really just embodies what we're about and that's development. And we've had for years a fantastic pipeline uh, from our academy to the first team that's brought us great success. And now again in this new era with new ownership and, and new resources, we're even more excited and bullish about the opportunities for, for our academy players coming through the ranks and beyond. One of those opportunities, obviously this MLS Next Pro Invitational, your second year hosting it, how does it help the club to be able to host an international tournament? What does it do for the club on the international stage? It's a lot of fun, first of all, it's a lot of fun. And I think before speaking about the club, I'll reference for what it does to the players. Um, as a former player myself, I think this is really important to hone in on. Um, it, look, any time you're gonna challenge yourself against your international peers, is really important. Um, important just because of the opportunities from a competitive standpoint, but also in development, having diversity in opponent, diversity in experiences, like anything in life, uh, just propels everything forward. And so from a player standpoint, on the developmental side, I think it's wonderful what the MLS Next Pro has built here. And we're happy to be a partner in that, you know, now and hopefully in future years. And then on the club side, again, I think it's just a great way to to legitimize um, our developmental teams within the global landscape and to build relationships with, with European sides and, and to build future pathways and ties. And, and again, just to another indicator, another metric to challenge our players um, in a different environment. You touched on two things there, the club side and the league side. Sure. So on that note, MLS Next Pro, only in its second year, how does what you guys have built here as an organization kind of provide a model for other clubs in MLS Next Pro to emulate? Oh, that's a, uh, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I don't know, I think, look, I think each market is unique. Um, and so the setup, you know, I think what Nashville is doing and having, having their MLS Next Pro team offsite in a different, um, almost secondary market is really interesting. And so I think it depends on the makeup of the team and, and the locale and the community and, and what works there. But for us specifically, one thing that we constantly hear from, from all of our peers in the landscape is that they're very jealous, very envious of the, of the opportunities that our campus provides. And that's having all of our players, and that's from the 13, 14 year olds all the way up to the professional players, on our campus 10 and a half months out of the year. And that is a huge luxury because we get so many more touch points, so many more opportunities to influence the development um, of all of our players. And so I think one thing this campus does really well and one thing that other markets maybe have, have uh, you know, tried to take away from us is is the ability for this campus or a setup like this to inspire development in an individual. Because that's a real important component of teaching. It's not just conveying information and just, you know, saying words and teaching. It's inspiring others, inspiring students to take ownership of, of learning, right? To take ownership of their own careers. And I think our market does that really well. Speaking of careers, you've spent almost all of your professional playing career with this club. So for you just personally, getting to be an assistant GM, getting to have a hand in helping develop these young guys, what does that mean to you? It's very special. Um, thank you so much. I feel so fortunate. Um, I definitely appreciate that this does not happen with every professional career, but, um, but being able to play the entirety of my career, my pro career in Salt Lake City, and now working in the front office for, for a club and for a community that really is a chief protagonist in my life um, is just is very special very special so I feel so fortunate fortunate to be part of this community and I'm so thankful you know, that the club still wants me. <laughs> well for good reason. Tony thank you so much for the time. My pleasure thank you. It's not every day we get to sit down with someone in the front office. This is Tony Beltran assistant general manager for Real Salt Lake. It was a busy week all around with MLS Next Pro Clubs. Michelle and Samara have a big task wrapping it all up in this week's Rewind.
weekend and aside all the international action going on here in Utah, Match Day 18 delivered quite the excitement. Michelle Montaigne and I are here to get you caught up on the best moments of the weekend. Now we start this rewind with great news out of LA. LAFC star goalkeeper Maxime Crapo is back. The Canadian keeper returned to the pitch following a lengthy recovery after suffering a devastating leg injury in the 2022 MLS Cup Final. Following the match, Crapo shared what it meant to be back in action and be part of the team's 2-1 win over Tacoma Defiance. Honestly, it's been a hell of a road, so personally I was just happy to, to play again, honestly, to, to play, to enjoy it, to have fun. Um, that was a, a big part uh, that I've missed playing uh, you, and then obviously there's a lot of ups and downs during those nine months uh, with the recovery process. Uh, but the fact that I've been able to, to come out with the guys and uh, to be fair, they, we handled, handled well the second half where we got the result and we got the job done. We did some small adjustments and tactically we, 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 came, up, uh, we came up on top. So I, I'm happy to, to get the three points with, uh, with the guys because they deserve it. We worked uh, well today and then now it's just to, to carry on and to get momentum out of that. Yeah. Keeping it out west, when the top team in the Western Conference is calling it their comeback of the year, you know it's got to be a big deal. Rapids 2 goes down 3-0 at the break, but fights back in the second half with two goals less than 10 minutes apart, supplemented by an Austin FC 2 own goal to send this one to a shootout. That's when Adam Baudry took over, making a critical save on the final kick from the spot to give his team the shootout victory. This is the second of three meetings between the top two teams in the West, with Rapids 2 so far taking multiple points each time. Now, if there's someone who's going to deliver some remarkable talking points, that's our defending champs. While Crew 2 took a 6-2 loss against Union 2, the game delivered moments we could not even make up. Just six minutes into the match, the Cappies went down a keeper following a foul that earned him a straight red card. Midfielder Clay Halstead came in to replace the starting crew to keeper and did an impressive job in the first half. However, the visitors took advantage of the mishap and delivered a flurry of goals. Two of them coming from Academy players David Vasquez and Luciano Sanchez. And for the second straight week, there is a new name atop the Golden Boot Race standing. With his brace in OCB's game against Chicago Fire 2, Jack Lynn sits in sole first with a tally of 12 total goals this season. This marks his second two-goal game in the month of July alone, having scored in all but one game this month. Behind him sits Nick Firmino with 11, followed by four players who each have 10. What a weekend. You can catch all the highlights on MLSNextPro.com and tune in to Match Day 19 on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. We'll see you back here next week. For Michelle and I, I'm Samara Perez signing off from Utah. Some exciting matchup from the previous match day, especially that number one versus number two seed in the Western Conference that saw the Colorado Avalanche able to fight their way back. Some scores earlier this week, this past Friday, Columbus Crew 2 bouncing back from that 6-2 loss against Philadelphia Union, 2-0 against Atlanta United. And also you see North Texas SC a 4-0 win over to T Portland Timbers 2. And we wrap off cap off match day 19 tomorrow with New York Red Bulls 2 versus Orlando City B. But here in Starfire Sports Stadium in Tukwila, Washington, we are tied at one between the third seed Tacoma Defiance and the fifth seed Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. Second matchup between the two clubs this season early in the first half, an own goal. Initially, we thought it was a goal for Glory Amanda for Vancouver, but it was an own goal for the Whitecaps after Jacob Castro could not keep that ball up in front. So that's one own goal that gave Vancouver a 1-0 lead and played pretty lax the last couple of uh, moments in the first half. There were some other opportunities. It took a lot of shots. And then you see Tacoma trying to respond. And it picked up at a decent spot throughout the first. There you see Cameron Habibula with a shot. The cross from Giovanni Aguilar. But Jacob Castro 
really took it upon himself defensively to make some key saves ever since giving up that own goal in the fourth minute. I mean, chance after chance, Castro was managed to get a hand up, but this is where Tacoma found their equalizer to level the match. It was another own goal because it bounced off of Finn Linder into the back left corner of the net to level this matchup at one apiece. Paul Rothrock was trying to find Georgie Manungu. It's now working here. Quick counter. Amanda trying to put Vancouver ahead late before the first half ended, but Jacob Castro has been phenomenal in the first half. Tacoma's won the possession battle 63%, both sides with eight shots in the first half. However, Vancouver with four on target. Seven corners for Tacoma, but it, these corner kicks, they don't really execute inside the box. They work it outside the box and around and then get in. Both sides have been accurate with their passes and just one yellow card that we've seen, and that was by Giovanni Aguilar over the Whitecaps FC2. As both sides back out on the pitch, we'll see how each side will adjust in the second half and which reserves we'll see come in to provide a spark now for the Coma Defiance. Chris Aquino scored the lone goal in the 2-1 loss against LAFC2 last week, and that was his first professional goal of the season. So Aquino could be someone that provides an impact. And for Vancouver, with Darko Illich, Malcolm Johnston on the bench, they can provide a spark as well. And we are underway to resume play. Second half between Tacoma and Vancouver. The Defiance in their home black kits. Vancouver in their road whites. Here at the Starfire Sports Stadium. Vancouver would love to get a win here. They have not won a match in the month of July. 0-2-1. Oh, Meanwhile, Tacoma is having themselves a good summer. That loss against LAFC 2 was their first loss since early June against St. Louis City 2. Every other match between now and then have resulted in a win or a draw. That's been the spark for Tacoma in these last few weeks. Also, Tacoma 5-1 and 2 at home at Starfire, Starfire Stadium, excuse me. Vancouver 2-5 and 2 on the road. That ball is out of play. Last touch by the Whitecaps FC2. Possession of Tacoma. Such a unique time at this part of the season. Not just for MLS Next Pro, but for MLS with teams competing in the League's Cup. The Seattle Sounders and Vancouver Whitecaps trying to find their way into the knockout round. There's a foul. A late whistle will put Tacoma in good field position near the final third. Can each team find some consistency? That's what head coach Ricardo Clark has talked about for the Whitecaps FC2. For the Tacoma Defiance, can they execute? Find some more looks here in the second half. On the far side, advancing up, Blake Bowen, one on one at the wing, flips one inside the 18 and rolls out past the end line. First corner kick. For Tacoma, and there you see, they waste no time in corner kicks. They don't try to set up a set piece. And on the cross, and just deflected at the end. Joshua in the Kala being able to deflect the attack. Travian Sousa really wanted to put Tacoma ahead. Take away Vancouver, Aguilar going to the back line. And Nicola was going deep, it's too far looking for Antoine Couplin. The 
Defiance building through their back line, now advancing up. Lured in those Vancouver defenders. Daroma covered by two defenders. Oh, good ball. Gets one out to Bradilio Rodriguez. Rodriguez cuts towards the middle. A lot of numbers right atop the box for Vancouver. Daroma goes far side. Now in the box. Manungu deflected and cleared by Vancouver. Max Anchor with a great job there. Second chance, Manungu trips. Another trip, no foul. Whitecaps FC 2-0, oh, great pass on the near side. Couplin. Now one-on-one, -on -one, cuts towards the middle. Antoine Couplin curves one and it goes left. That was a beautiful look atop the box by the right winger, Couplin. He has two goals on the year, also three assists. He's taken almost 30 shots. That may have been the clearest shot he's got in this match. Another good ball. Manungu offside. There have been some great passes by Tacoma here in the second half. Just different looks to lead their strikers. And Nikala goes back to anchor. Gooplin. To the back line, in the collar, working with Gary Simenkov. Rather, that's Linder across midfield. Linder gave up the goal in the first half, an own goal that leveled this match with Tacoma. And the collar goes up. Open space in the middle, inside the box, cleared. Kuplin tried to recover, there's a foul right at the arc. And the yellow card gonna be given to the Defiance. So rather no yellow card, but still a great free kick here. As you see the jersey pull off the left hand of Stota Kitahara. This is a free kick. About 22, 23 yards for Vancouver. Can you retake the lead here? Habibula and Greco Taylor back for the free. From Vancouver. <laughs> Chance for Tacoma on the far side wing. Manungu goes back out. These quick counters. For Tacoma, take away Vancouver. Advance to Couplin. Couplin in space. Oh, good ball. Right, fires, blocked by Castro. Another opportunity 
for Vancouver that they cannot capitalize on. That was a great ball through inside the 18. And Castro, who has been extremely busy throughout this match, another tremendous save. So the free kick just outside the arc was unsuccessful. The counter attack unsuccessful as well for the Whitecaps FC2. How will the corner kick work out? And you see in the left side of your screen, Antoine Kuplin is getting into it with the back line for Tacoma. Some chippiness between Kuplin and Paul Rothrock. On the corner for Vancouver. Still in the box. Habibula has it. Goes out wide. Aguilar. Here's a cross. And too far away. It's off the head of Greco Taylor. Or sent by Greco Taylor, I should say. Possession will stay with Whitecaps FC2. Couldn't keep that one in play. The Coma will have possession. So through the back line in the 56th minute, this portion of the match is brought to you by your Western Washington Toyota dealers, a proud supporter of Tacoma Defiance. Vancouver trying to get the ball out of harm's way. Almost a takeaway. Player down, a foul. You see Kitahara trying to plead his case to the official. Itahara is going to get a yellow card. So Kitahara is trying to challenge and make, regain possession for the Defiance and instead get to yellow. Ball rolls back to Max Anchor. Anchor sends this one deep. Itahara tried to control. Tacoma and Minungu trying to hang on, but taken away once again by Vancouver. A man on the far side. Amanda, good pass up inside the box for Vancouver. Shot right into the hands of Castro. Castro has been on it. Here comes the counter. Rodriguez across midfield for Tacoma. That last pass from Kitahara deflected, trying to get to Sousa. Now on the other side for Vancouver, El Hajba advances to Kuplin. Kuplin fired with the left, and Castro's there again. <laughs> Jacob Castro, what a game he has had for Tacoma. Has really put it upon himself to make some key saves after the own goal in the opening minutes. No reserves have checked in yet for either side. The 
Oklahoma working through their back line, now advancing up to Rodriguez. Back to Uteritz. And there's a foul. This time a yellow card given to Vancouver. Deer running up. So Mihail Gerasimenkov with the yellow. Play resumes in the 60th minute. Kitahara. Now went to the Roma. Out of play. So far in the second half, Tacoma's played some solid defense. And the unique thing about assistant coach Mike Morris is that he is obsessed with watching video, preparing, and doing research for strategy purposes. And that ball sailed away by Castro. And that was because, hold on, inside the box now, and that one sails right. Vancouver continuing to threaten. Couplin, one-on-one at the wing, high cross. On the far side, Aguilar goes out. Advancing into the final third again, Aguilar. And, oh, nice ball on the outside, but good defense from Tacoma. Another takeaway, advances up to Minungu. Oh, that ball found a way to get through across midfield. The Como with a chance here. Oh, nice ball finding Travian Sousa at the wing. Sousa one on one. Sousa in the box, crossed again. And nobody home. Now it's sent back out over to Sousa again, cross deflected. And good job defensively by Ba. It's been the shots in transition that have caught Vancouver off guard if you're Tacoma. But at some point you have to capitalize. A corner kick coming up, but will they run a set piece here or just have a pass into the field? That's what they do again, Sousa. Rodriguez, oh, some miscommunication between Sousa and the Roma. Some really good looks in that sequence for the Defiance. At some point, those are going to connect. Both sides have taken over 10 shots in this match. It's been an aggressive offensive matchup. On the throw in. At the wing. Rothrock. On the edge. And it's deflected. The Roma. Oh, nice ball inside the end line. Cross and was looking for Rodriguez. And it's once again cleared by Vancouver. Tacoma trying to keep that ball near the final third and out of bounds. Heads up for some of the fans at the top of the bleachers. Offside. Possession 
will stay with the coma. This portion of the match is brought to you by the Piala Tribe of Indians, a proud supporter of the Coma Defiance. As the Defiance was down early in the opening minutes of the first half, an own goal off of Jacob Castro. Found the equalizer with an own goal from Finn Linder. Now trying to take the lead as Rodriguez goes down, no foul. Possession, Vancouver. We'll have our first reserve make the way in for Tacoma. So Bradilio Rodriguez done for the match. And Juan Alvarez will take over. Alvarez, the first reserve player making their way in here in the second half. Oh, almost a nervy moment there for Tacoma. It's Castro almost lost it. On the far side, Raw to Rock, cutting towards the middle. Great pass, finally gonna open Sousa. Sousa, it's good defense for Vancouver. It has been so challenging to get by their defenders. Elaj Ba, a name we haven't said much, defensively has done a tremendous job just being able to hold off some of these attacks. In the final third for Vancouver. Whitecaps FC2 trying to take the lead. Sent out by Tacoma. Cleared. The Defiance have it and deflected. Manungu couldn't hang on. In the Kala, goes wide. Entering the 18, and the shot, oh, scooped up by Castro. Another takeaway, final third. Touches one inside, and good defense at the very end. Stuart Hawkins covering Lowell Wright. Whitecaps FC2 threatening. Bah. Recovers. Foul. Gonna go on to Defiance. Possession Vancouver. Good ball on the far side wing. Amanda was trying to break through, take away. Alvarez, getting his first touches, goes wide across midfield. Sousa, Kita Hard couldn't get there. Here comes Vancouver, a good ball up to Kuplin. Kuplin in the 18, Kuplin. Sends it back out in the collar, the dummy, the shot. Oh, another save by Castro. The misdirection did not work out for the Whitecaps FC2. You see Kuplin in the collar of the dummy setting up Habi Bula, rockets one right at the center. But Jacob Castro, my goodness, have yourself a day. 
More reserves for Tacoma. Gio Migletti will check in for Georgie Minungu. So Migletti taking over as the right wing in this 3-5-2 formation. Throughout this match, there have been a couple of balls that's been slotted to Manungu. So Migletti should keep that same awareness and activity up in that position. So two of the five reserves in for Tacoma. No reserves yet for Vancouver. That ball bouncing to the final third. Look a chance, oh, just off. A collision in the front post. Another close call for the Defiance. And right on cue, McLeddy was calling for it. And it kind of slid in past Max Anchor, the goalkeeper. If that was more on a clear path, we could be looking at a 2-1 Tacoma lead. Abby Bullock caught for the foul. Wasting no time. Alvarez outside to Souza. Souza in the box. Cross the shot goal! Gio McLeddy! 2-1. One Tacoma defiant Gio McLeddy as soon as he came in finds the back of the net. McLeddy wanted it the first time, didn't work out second time at the right spot. And how about Gio McLeddy? Fourth goal on the season. And it comes off the bench in the second half for Tacoma. So the 23-year-old McLeddy comes in and right on cue, keeping up with that same pace that Georgie Manungu had in the first half, trying to find opportunities inside the box. Pressure now on Vancouver. They've had some solid takeaways, but every time they've gotten to the box, Jacob Castro has been lights out. Has made some of the most crucial saves in this match. Javi Bula advancing up. Elaj Ball. Kuplin. Back inside the 18. Right at the top, Lau, shot deflected. It's a low right, unsuccessful that time, but the big thing is Vancouver keeping up with that aggressiveness as head coach Ricardo Clark wants to see from his team consistency. Can they find some consistency throughout the rest of his half? I mean, there has been some improvements lately from this Whitecaps FC2 side. They've been better in possession and better in their buildup. That's what Coach Clark has said as Anchor sails this one away. Another chance for Tacoma. Daroma. Inside the 18 again. Shot goes left. The Defiance have found their confidence in the last few possessions. It's a great setup. The takeaway for Tacoma in the attacking third. Sousa. Kitahara rotating back. Tacoma going to their back line. 
Hawkins to Uteritz. Castro advances it back up for Tacoma. Now Vancouver with a chance. Still with it. Amanda goes wide. Amanda shaking it up a bit. But inside the box off the head and cleared by Tacoma. And Gloria Amanda is limping on the pitch. Something is off with him. And that is going to be a foul. Is it in or out of the box? It's going to be just outside the box. So take a look here. And right at the very end, in the collar gets tripped up. And that's where the foul takes place. So keep an eye out for Gloria Amanda. Right at the arc on your screen. Number 44 for Whitecaps FC2. Was limping there for a moment. Seems to be okay. He'll stay in this match. Vancouver, another free kick just atop the box. Can they convert this time and level the match? And there you see, you see Amanda getting into it, shoving a Tacoma player. And he's fired up. So Kara and Calado trying to calm things down. Trying to ease the tensions here in this Pacific Northwest matchup. So Amanda, you see him getting tied up once again. He's on the free kick. Oh. Player down for Tacoma. It's a hard shot to the head of the captain, Hal Uteritz. And you see here again. Oof. <laughs> So while Uteritz gets checked on by the trainers, Vancouver will have a reserve, their first reserve check in. Joe Hansen will take over for Gloria Amanda as the striker. So notice there, you know, before Amanda got caught up with the coma players inside the box, we saw some chippiness or we saw some, we saw Amanda get tripped up and was limping there for a moment. So Coach Clark making the switch, bringing in Hanson. It's good to see Uteritz up on his own power now with the off-field treatment rule. He must stay off the pitch for at least three minutes until he's able to, he is good to come back in. So he's getting checked right on the end here. And it's a corner kick for Vancouver. Cleared out by Tacoma. This play resumes in the 78th minute. The near side, Kuplin. Kuplin couldn't hang on. Turnover. Alvarez in space. Alvarez trying to keep going. McLeddy gets it from Alvarez. Great teamwork. Alvarez up to McLeddy. Alvarez goes up in the 18. No foul. Now there is. And there's going to be a free kick where McLeddy is sitting at. That's going to put 
Tacoma in great field position. As you see here, the tag team of Juan Alvarez and Gio McLennan, the two reserves that's checked in for the Defiance, working so well up the pitch. And a free kick coming up for Tacoma. Well, we have a moment. This portion of the match is brought to you by Providence Swedish, official health care provider and partner of Seattle Sounders FC and Tacoma Defiance. Approaching the 80th minute. Can Tacoma make it 3-1? Sousa and DeRoma setting things up. Mr. Roma on the cross, and it's off the head of Vancouver. Still inside the box, off the right leg, and it goes right. Stuart Hawkins almost made it 3-1 defiance. As you see here, high in the air. Bounce a second time and just off on that shot with the right. Castro calling off to the back line to receive possession. Deep ball sent by Castro. Back and forth. Both teams jockeying for position. It's one by Tacoma. throw in. Take away Vancouver. Oh, great defense slide by Sousa. Alvarez to McLeddy. Kitahara advancing up. Oh, fancy footwork from Blake Bowen. The cross. And just off on the right. <laughs> How about the footwork? Just couldn't finish it. And rather, that was Frank DeRoma. I mean, my goodness. Another takeaway for Tacoma. Sousa, oh nice touch up to Alvarez. Alvarez finds McLeddy. McLeddy atop the box. McLeddy inside the box and it's cleared out by Vancouver. Recovered by Tacoma, Kitahara. Far side for DeRoma. On the far side, DeRoma has Manungu inside the box. So we initially thought that McLeddy came in for Manungu, correction, and Getty came in for Rothrock. So here's Manungu on the far side towards the end line, deflected. Here's a chance inside the box. Bowen took too much time. In situations like that, you have to really step up and fire. Here comes the Whitecaps FC2. 
Just good defense. Daroma laying it all out there. Here's Habibullah. Haven't called his name much in the second half. Can he get involved and provide a spark? On the far side, Girashiman Cove. I'm starting to run out for Vancouver. Aguilar. Just off. Had ball right there, but the pass wasn't crisp enough. So reserve making his way in. Darko Illich in for Elaj Ba. So a defensive switch. Play on. Alvarez. Didn't get enough mustard on that pass. Illich working with Javi Bula. Final third, Hanson. Good save and recovery. Oh, nice pass in, Javi Bula, can he get there quick enough? No. Talk about a tale of two halves, both goals that were scored in the first, own goals. Castro with the own goal to put Vancouver on the board. Finn Linder accidentally touched it in the back of the net, leveling the match for Tacoma. But then in this second half, when the reserves started coming in, they really stepped up. Gio McLeddy finding that goal, his fourth on the year, to give Tacoma a 2-1 lead. That, along with the defensive efforts of Jacob Castro, making up for his mistakes, is why Tacoma has this lead. It's why Tacoma's controlled possession of the ball for majority of this match. And even now, as we speak, Tacoma 62% possession compared to the 38 for the Whitecaps FC2. But there is still a little bit of time, under four minutes to go in regulation, plus stoppage. Unless the Coma can find one more goal here in these final moments. Anchor has it. Abby Bula in the middle. Illich tried to get there. Rather, which right. Right, trying to spin his way through. Lost it, recovered by Vancouver. Illich entering the final third. On the corner, crossed by Coupland, blocked. Coupland gets it back inside the 18. Illich towards the end line, cross. No handball. Out of bounds. Possession stays with the Whitecaps FC2. Some of those Vancouver players thought there should have been a handball call. Inside the box and the throw in. Vancouver shot right to Castro. Greco Taylor took his best shot of the day and Castro was ready on cue. Here comes the counter for Tacoma. Menungu inside the 18, sets it up. Migletti can't get there, scooped up by Anchor. Open field for Illich. Goes down the Coupland, final third foul. So looking back at that previous possession that 
turned into a potential handball from Tacoma. There you see. Almost looked like a hand got on it. Turned into a counterattack for Tacoma, and they could not convert. So in the 89th minute, a free kick going into the final third, and Cameron Habibula will set it up for the Whitecaps FC2. In these spots where we saw chippiness, we saw it from Gloria Manda before he was subbed out. And this is a crucial moment for Vancouver. They want to try to at least get a draw, send this game to kicks from the spot. Ah! Abibula on the free kick. Off the head, and Castro comes down with it. There have been a lot of free kicks and great looks for Vancouver. They have not been able to capitalize in the second. Across midfield and taken away, recovered by Indicala. Just couldn't get it passed. It's a bad setup by Girashim and Cove. Good pass. No foul. The Roma on the far side at the wing. Three minutes of stoppage time. Good job by Tacoma, opening up the field. Castro gives it right back. Sousa can't hang on, taken away. Illich down the near side, in the, in the box. No foul. A lucky break for Tacoma, good defense. Another close look, especially with Illich had two defenders on him. You see the slide by Elias Katsaros. Now on the other side, for Tacoma, Alvarez tripped up. Illich recovers. Inside two minutes to go in regulation, or in stoppage, I should say. Could be the last possession and real chance for Whitecaps FC2. In the Kala. Advances up. Couplin. Right. In the Kala in the box. Illich fires blocked. Katsaros with the slide at the last second. Some good passing from Vancouver. But it was Katsaros getting his foot out there at the last possible moment. Now inside the final minute of stoppage, corner kick, Vancouver. The first corner resulted in an own goal. How will the possible last corner fare? Cleared out by Tacoma. Anchor. All the way up at the center circle. Leads that one into the final third. Deflected. Migletti. Fighting one-on-one -on -one by Javi Bula. Recovered by Indicala. Vancouver have it. And a foul. A whistle was blown. And a yellow card given to Vancouver and Happy Bula. <laughs> Unique call 
as we're in the final moments of this match. You got to give credit to Vancouver. 18 shots in this match, nine shots on target, and 10 shots in the box. However, the second half has been all Tacoma. Gio Migletti coming in and giving Tacoma a 2-1 lead. Alvarez will throw it in. McLeddy playing keep away. Out of bounds by two defenders. And that's going to do it. Tacoma, a 2-1 win over Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. They avenged themselves from the loss they took earlier this year, 1-0. And have now evened the season series. And Tacoma gets three points and will advance to nine, four, and six on the year. Six, one, and two inside Starfire Sports Stadium. A lot of back and forth action in this match. Some own goals in the first half, but it was Gio McLeddy who came in and really wanted to get on the board, calling for it on multiple occasions. The first time had a great, a great look that just didn't work out. The second time, Travian Sousa on the cross. McLeddy was there at the right time in the right moment, putting Tacoma up 2-1, and he is our man of the match. Today's man of the match is Gio McLeddy of Tacoma Defiance, and it's presented by Adidas. So after a loss to LAFC 2, Tacoma gets back on track of a 2-1 win over Vancouver. The Whitecaps FC2 dropped to 8-8-4 eight, eight of the year. And we'll see how the other teams do throughout next pro and see where they fit in the Western Conference table. For our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew, I'm Danny Wall. Once again, our final score, Tacoma Defiance 2, Whitecaps FC 2, 1. And don't forget, you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. From our crew, we'll see you next time. Have a good night. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next Pro may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.